angry guy here and ai reveal how to destroy feminism forever ai reveals how to destroy feminism forever let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So I asked Grok AI to basically break down how to end feminism forever. And these are the results that it actually gave to me. I said, it responded, I must remind you that I am politically unbiased. However, I love it when it says like, you know, basically theoretically, you know, if we were gonna do it, this is how you would actually do it, right? I can provide an objective explanation of the steps that would theoretically lead to the removal of feminism and its principles from the world. Please note this is does not reflect my personal opinions or the views of XAI, the company that has developed Grok. So it says change in societal values. Over time, societal values and beliefs can shift a change in societal values that promotes a more traditional view of gender roles and a rejection of gender equality could lead to the decline of feminism. Number two, government intervention. Governments could enact laws and policies that limit the rights of women and suppress feminist movement. This could include limiting access to education, employment opportunities, and political representation for women. Number three, media influence. The media can play a significant role in shaping public opinion. A concerted effort by media outlets to promote anti-feminist ideas and narratives could sway public opinion against feminism and its principles. Number four, education system. The education system can also play a role in shaping societal values and beliefs. Curricula that promote traditional gender roles and discourage feminist ideas could contribute to the decline of feminism. And number five, Global cooperation. For feminism to be removed from the entire world, there would need to be global cooperation among governments, media, and educational institutions to promote anti-feminist ideas and suppress feminist movement. I mean, guys, there you have it from AI, how we could go about how theoretically feminism could be destroyed forever or would be destroyed forever. And if you notice, many of the things that it talked about using the media, the education system, let's look at it again, media, education system, changing social values, government intervention, all of the, and global corporation. These are all things that were deployed and used to push feminism and make feminism what it is today. So basically using essentially the same strategies that were used to push feminism on society could actually be used to remove feminism from society and from global society and forever. If we look at what's happening around the world today and specifically in Western society, the ideals of feminism have essentially led to societies where men no longer want to be there, where men are now dropping out of these societies, no longer participating in Western societies that are strongly influenced by feminism. If you look at even patriarchal societies that have been touched by feminism, like Japan, like South Korea, you can see the effects on society. A large part of the reason why men are choosing not to marry or have children in these societies is because of how things have shifted. Men have always had to work hard. Japan has not changed as much as people think. Before, they, before these men went and labored in the offices, they were laboring in the fields. Working hard in Japan has always been a normal thing. It's always been like that. The, what's shifted are social views, women believing that now they have their own money, so they don't have to have children. They don't need to get married. They can do whatever they choose to do and live their lives however they choose to live them. And we see the startling effects that's having for women in society. If we look at this screen, we can literally see, for example, in Japan right now, poverty and the results of such poverty are driving more young women into becoming evening delights, which is another way of saying ladies of the night. Many of these young women live in cyber cafes. They are basically going with uncles, 
These are the men who are bit, another name for Johns, the men that pay to spend an evening with them. They go to love hotels. These are actually teenagers. Most of these women are teenagers. And their clients will pay between 5,000 and 20,000 yen, which is around 30, 30 euro to 120 euro, which works out to about 34 US dollars or 139 US dollars one hour of paid lovemaking at a love hotel. And after 10 p.m., some head for the theme bars dressed as nurses, lolitas, or super rays. And these girls usually live in cyber cafes in the heart of Kubikisho at 4,600 yen, which works out to 28 euros or about 30, 31 US dollars a night for a single cabin. Police have taken 35 of these young women into custody back in September, 80 since the beginning of the year, compared with 51 in 2022. And of the 35 taken into custody, around 15 were in debt to the host. Young men working in women-only clubs, dressed in costumes with makeup and grooming. This is pretty serious. They typically uh, take these women solitarily from the providences using a charm. They charm them online and then lure them to their club. And they end up spending crazy amounts of money, up to $200,000 a night. Then they, the hosts use mind control tactics. And they literally train that they're literally trained by the club management to use. It's, this is unbelievable stuff. This is actually happening in Japan. And I want you guys to take this into consideration of how the Western world works, that we are quickly moving towards something that could re resemble the Handmaid's Tale as a result of feminism in this world today, how feminism has been implemented, the effects of feminism on Western society, on women in society. We're beginning to see some reversals, but you have to understand that women will hold that horse. They will stay on their horse till the end of time. They will ride that hill out. They will never admit wrongdoing. They will blame everyone else. And you're seeing a pattern where, where older women are telling younger women that they should go, go to medical school, go and get those degrees, you know, stay on the streets, live these types of lives that they live and they can have everything they want. And it's not just like you have to have just one thing. You can have both. These are the same women who are single, childless at, childless at age 40. They're desperate to have children. They're looking for a husband. They're not able to find the guy they want. They're able to find a guy that wants them. Of course, they're always going to be the guys that will, you know, they'll go in, they'll make love to them, but they're not going to actually be in a long-term relationship with them. They're not actually going to try to establish a family with them. These women are in their 40s. Some of them are pushing 50. And they're telling young women to go down this alley. And of course, they get them while they're young. They're going at them in the schools, just like we saw in the model that was provided by, by AI, telling us how to end feminism. This is the same way that feminism was used to push, be pushed upon society and how it took control of society and how it has now taken control of the minds of young people, especially young girls in society. So this is the actions that we've seen here, and it's not going to stop. They're going to keep on pushing this. I've already said this, that it will take at least 100 years before the effects of feminism can be undone in Western society. And by then, you know, countries like America may no longer exist, or the state that America currently is in may no longer exist. America is a very young country. This country is only around 400 years old. And when you consider just how young the United States is, then you begin to realize and rationalize that it's very easy for other countries that have been around for long periods of time to easily take over and control the minds of this country. This is America thinks that because we're so technologically advanced and we have all these strategies and everything else, we, you know, we're not susceptible to anything. But the truth of the matter is, is that we're a very young country. And that is the biggest flaw. Arrogance is our biggest flaw. And it is easy for countries like Russia and, and, and many others to spread this influence because these are ancient countries. We're talking about things like the Ottoman Empire. You know, like these are these are countries that go back thousands and thousands of years. They've done this before. Romania, they've done this before. I remember when this reporter, she this journalist did an interview 
with Andrew, if you don't know who I'm talking about, Mr. Tate. And she asked him in the interview, maybe a few months ago, she said, are you trying to rule the world? And he goes, I am not trying to rule the world. And it was quite interesting when she asked him that question, because these people, they, they've dealt with men who've tried to rule the world for, for millennia, millennia. This is a normal thing for them. They've seen nations rise and nations fall. It's a part of their history. So they're used to this type of thing. America is such a young country. America feels like it's on top. America doesn't think that it could disappear overnight, and it absolutely can. America can vanish overnight, and the rest of the world would keep on going. Would there be hardships? Would there be fallout? Yes, but there would also be a lot of people who would say good riddance to bad rubbish. Guys, what do you think regarding what you saw here today? AI revealed how to destroy feminism for ever. I thought it was quite intriguing. Let me know what you think in the comments and we'll talk about it more there. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away, and cheers.